Hello everybody, welcome to my next video on using Affinity Photo for astrophotography image processing. Serif have just released a new beta version of Affinity Photo which enables you to stack astrophotography images so when you take a number of subs you can stick those together to produce a much smoother image from those subs and add them together. And I'm going to show you how to do that using Affinity Photo. Of course, don't forget, if you like this video, please like me. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, so here's an image of uh, the Rosette Nebula I took with my DSLR a few years ago. And you can see a lot of structure in there. Of course, the originals don't look like that with lots of light pollution. They have to be processed to be able to do that. And of course, one of the key things to have to do is to stack a number of images. The version that uh, Serif have released is this one here. It's 1.90885. It's a beta version, and I'm going to put the address underneath the YouTube video on the YouTube page for you to download. And it should be below on my blog as well. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we need to do if we go to file up here and go to new astrophotography stack it opens this window here as you can see it's completely blank and the only things that you can sort of see to do is apply and cancel so don't touch those at the moment but down here on the right hand side you can see a files tab so make sure that's open and then we need to add some files which will appear in here Okay, this is file group one, so we'll leave that as file group one. We'll leave it as light because these are the light frames that I've taken, and we're going to stack 100%. I've already checked them out to make sure they're all okay, so I'm only going to be stacking good frames anyway. And then down here, this little button is add files. So if we click that button and go to the folder that we want the pictures to come from, which is that one there. So these are the raw files from my camera. I'm going to open all those and you can see they appear in the stack here and if you go up and down those images you can see they're slightly different each one but you can view them just by clicking on the appropriate image you can see the tracking slightly out as well because it's moving slightly and that's with auto guiding would you believe but there you go so that's all my light frames put in the stack here ready for stacking if you've got dark frames or flat fieldings, what you can do up here, if you add a file group and then you get the number two up here, it goes blank again. And then you change that to darks or biases. It might be flats. OK, so we're going to call them um, dark frames. And then if you go open files again and pop those in there, that will be your dark frames. And they'll be subtracted or they'll go towards the final result of your image. But I don't have any, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of that group. I never use um, dark or light frames with my DSLR images because I found they cause more problems than they're worth anyway. Okay, but you can use, you know, both bias, dark, dark flats and flat images within your processing if you want to. <clears throat> Okay, under stacking options, we've got different stacking methods. So we can have mean, median, or sigma clipping. Of course, sigma clipping is the one you use if you've got something like an aeroplane going through one or two of your images, or even a star link going through most of your images, maybe. Um, <clears throat> but mean and median will uh, just average things out. And then I haven't touched these at all, so I'm going to leave those as the original settings were. Under raw options, we've got whatever the fits Bayer pattern is. Um, I've just left it as how it comes, as inferred, but there are lots of different um, patterns you can put in there, um, but I've left it as inferred for this because I think it just decides what it can see on the images. They, uh, I've left that as default, and white balance I've left as daylight. Okay, so I'm now ready to go. So just up here, if you click Stack, that should now stack those images so you can see it's got a progression bar here it's now going through all those images working out where all the stars are and it's actually stacking them all on top of one another and registering those images and producing our final stack 
at the moment there isn't a comet stacking method so you can't select a, a comet or another moving object in those images for it to stack um, preferentially on that comet or that moving object so that's something I've suggested that they might bring out a little bit later but uh, whether they can or not who knows but it's nice to see that they're actually trying to improve the software and make it more of a useful tool for everybody now this does take a while so while it's doing that I'll just leave it running and I'll be back to you in a moment okay so here we are right at the very end of the stacking process it's now started to uh, finish that and then we get the final image which is now ready for us for processing so if you click apply that now opens in the normal uh, photo persona ready for us to use all the tools within affinity photo to be able to get the result that we want out of that image just like this and of course i'm not going to tell you about those tools at the moment but uh, if you'd like to know how I managed to manipulate an image that looks like that to that, then my Affinity Photo Astrophotography Image Processing Guide is available on my website, star-gazing.co.uk. Okay, don't forget to like my video if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.